This is Five on Your Side at noon, focused on you. As we go on the air at noon, students in Jennings are mourning the death of a 14-year-old classmate stabbed to death after school. Thanks for being here. I'm Kay Quinn. Justin Brooks attended Jennings Junior High School. Right now, counselors are on campus to help his classmates deal with news of his death, and police are looking for the person who stabbed him. It all happened yesterday afternoon on Horde Avenue, which is just down the street from the school. Five on your side's Brent Solomon has reaction from stunned neighbors. Crime tape and cop cars flood the 2400 block of Horde Avenue just after three in the afternoon. I was coming home from work and realized I couldn't get that way, so I had to go all the way around. And now that I'm here, I just found out that someone has been stabbed. A 14 year old stabbed to death right on this street. Another kid that we didn't lost. She says her grandson goes to Jennings Junior High, the same school as the 14 year old victim. My grandson knew the young man. And as I was questioning him, his, he got so teary eyed. So I had to stop questioning him about the situation. School resource officers quickly arriving to the scene. They immediately began life-saving measures and attempts to stabilize him until EMS arrived. Authorities rushed him to the hospital where he died. At this time, no motive and no suspects identified. Five on your side noticed a crying teenager being taken into questioning, yelling out, quote, I didn't do anything. Neighbors believe there was a group of people of different ages on scene when there was some type of confrontation. We heard one adult telling police she tried to stop it before the situation escalated. Investigators realize the impact a crime like this can have on those who knew the teen. Another thing is that we'll be working with the school district to ensure that the student body has the resources they need in reference to uh, counseling and stuff like that in regards to this tragic event. It just hurt my heart to know that a young man has lost their life. That was Brent Solomon reporting. St. Louis County Police say they've stepped up patrols outside the school. Take a look at this surveillance footage. It shows a Mizzou student who's been missing since Friday. These are the moments before 22-year-old Riley Strain disappeared in Nashville. You can see him stumbling in the road after being kicked out of a bar on Broadway. A worker at a downtown business saw him walk by but didn't think to call for help. I see this situation like three, four times a day. Um, too many people fall uh, fall down on the floor uh, because of drink. After two days, his mother was here. She asked me. She was crying. She asked me about him. If I seen him, I told her I seen him outside, walking that way. But I didn't see him after that. Strain's parents traveled from their home in Springfield, Missouri, to help with the search. Their son was spending spring break in Nashville with a group of friends. Police are trying to identify this man seen shooting at another passenger on a Metro bus in Vanita Park. It happened last week on Hanley Road. The North County Police Cooperative released this surveillance video of the shooting, showing the man sitting in a seat near the back of the bus before standing up in the aisle and opening fire. A passenger suffered non-life-threatening injuries. New information now about a house fire that took the life of a woman in Wright City last week. Today we learned her infant, who was also pulled from the burning house, has died. Firefighters went in through a window to get the 23-year-old woman and her three-month-old baby as that house on Westwood Road burned Friday. The woman died after being taken to a hospital. The baby's father remains in critical condition with severe burns. Two others escaped safely. Investigators say the cause of the fire was accidental. The discovery of a car has police in northern Illinois reopening a 47-year-old cold case. Crews pulled the 1966 Chevy Impala from a river near Rockford yesterday. Police say the vehicle is tied to a case involving two men who disappeared in February of 1976. Fishermen spotted the car on their sonar and alerted authorities. Dive crews found the vehicle about 8 to 10 feet below the surface. 
Friday everyone, meteorologist Tracy Hinson here in for Jim Castillo today. 71 degrees for us, good mix of sun and clouds outside. We have light winds and that extra heat that we're getting from the day could power off a few storms. Right now conditions are dry, but I expect this radar to have a few pop-up storms today north of Interstate 70. So 78 degrees for our afternoon. Gosh, that is sure is nice, isn't it? Then we're going to drop down into the mid 60s after sunset. That's when we start to have a few chances for some storms. I do think starting off around 6 o'clock leading into around 9 p.m. is our best shot at some of those storms. We do have a second wave that is going to come in overnight tonight and then yet another wave that will come in to late tomorrow evening. 59 degrees for us overnight. Winds out of the south at 10 miles per hour. Our sunset is at 7.05. Coming up in the next few minutes, I'm going to outline those storms in greater detail for you and go over the slight cool down we have in our seven day forecast. We do have the potential for some severe storms tomorrow, so you'll want to be sure to check it in. Good afternoon, this is Mercedes McKay in downtown Alton. Today is your last chance to voice your opinion about a safety plan that would make the streets here in downtown safer for everyone, whether you're walking, bicycling, or using public transportation. It's called the Alton Great Streets Plan, and it's all thanks to a grant the city received. This will help the city implement traffic safety measures that can be built quickly and are adjustable. City officials say this plan will do everything from creating safer crossing to improving access to the riverfront to even bolstering transit downtown. They're asking residents to send photos of areas they want to see improvements. To send the photos, all you have to do is take the pictures, then send them via email to the city with captions attached. In Alton, Mercedes McKay, five on your side. One of the largest animal shelters in St. Louis is asking for your help. Stray Rescue says its shelter is critically overcrowded. The organization needs people to foster or adopt cats and dogs. They say the shelter is so crowded it's currently unable to rescue any animals in need. It's a stray problem. Um, animals are being dumped and we always try to help. It, it's a spay and neuter problem at the end of it. it there's a lot of contributing factors. If you can adopt or foster a pet, head to Stray Rescue's headquarters on Pine Street this Saturday. It's holding an adoption event starting at 11 a.m. Still ahead, a concern growing around a popular streaming company. What Roku subscribers are urged to do after a data breach. And there will be fewer Dollar Trees by the end of the year. The reason the discount retailer is closing hundreds of stores.